to introduce Hannah Darlin. She's a professor of midwifery at the University of Western Sydney. She's also the national media spokesperson for the Australian College of Midwives, where she deals regularly with media on midwifery issues. Over to you, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jane. And this is one of the reasons I'm a midwife and not an obstetrician, because I can't stand technology. And um, I have a good set of hands, and they always seem to work. So thanks, everyone, for being patient. And um, if you didn't hear what I said before, happy Midwives Day. And I think this is a very exciting day. And I'm going to show you some statistics soon that will show how important this day is for getting the role of the midwife out into the public. So why do I think that we need more political midwives now than ever before? Um, I don't know how much you caught of what I was saying before, but so much is happening in the world today that affects midwives, so many good things and some things that are worrying and taking us back. And it's really important that we're not apathetic with the good things and that we push them forward. And it's really important that we don't give up and we don't fight the injustices that are also sometimes being leveled. So if you look at the definition um, of, there are people here saying they can't hear. So I hope, hope that's working all right. Um, if you look at the definition of politics, it's manoeuvring for power in a group, and that's essentially what politics is. It's about manoeuvring for power in a group. And you only have to watch children in a playground to realise we're hardwired to manoeuvre um, for power in a group. And midwives are no different. But in many ways, we have a bigger job ahead. We have a, a bigger fight. We have a harder... Um, we have a harder road because we are dealing with women's issues and we are predominantly women and we're dealing in a world where unfortunately childbirth and, and women and their place in society are often not given the importance that they should be given. So I want to uh, begin by this concept that, you know, politics can be good, it can be bad and it can be downright ugly and politics can be used to take us into the future. And that, of course, is the politics we all should subscribe to. But politics can also be used to keep the status quo. And we have to be very wary of the use of politics to hold things firm in order that there would be certain groups that would continue to have the power that they need. And politics can also be used to take us back into the past. And we also need to be very, very wary of that. One of the things that I am most concerned about is that midwives often feel a sense of giving up, a sense of helplessness, a sense that they can't do the work, change the world. Well, of course alone, we can't. But I love this quote from Mother Teresa. While we can't change the world alone, we can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. And the thing about casting stone across waters and creating ripples is you never know where those ripples land and what distance you're that has an impact. So I just really want to encourage midwives not to feel this up, not to give up. Remember, if you cast your stone and everybody else does, eventually those ripples will reach some distance short. The other thing I think that's absolutely critical is that we often think about changing the world, but nobody thinks about changing themselves, as Leo Tolstoy said. And as very famously Gandhi said, we need to be the change. And I, I find it fascinating, and I've been doing a lot of research where we've been interviewing midwives and then actually observing their practice, ethnographic work. And what I find fascinating is that midwives have what I call an international rhetoric. We all know what midwives um, should do. We all know um, the mantra. We all know how to answer the right way. But what midwives say in an interview or in a focus group, and what you then see in practice are very different things. And there is this sense that often midwives understand the right way to be and the right way to act and the right way to be political. But when they get into the huge machinery of the maternity system and all of the, the power play um, that goes on there, they revert very quickly to being part of that system. So being the change takes an awful lot of time. Clark like wrote a wonderful paper on the uh, importance of midwives being political. And uh, he said that midwives' roles were diminished over the last century, not because of their failure as caregivers, but because of their failure to respond to the political challenges they faced. 
And I think if we look back over the last 300 years of history where midwifery really lost much of its role and um, presence in maternity care, it wasn't because midwives weren't doing a good job. It was often because they were not educated, they were not connected, they didn't work together, and frankly, they'd never had to face this before. So responding to the political challenges that we face is absolutely essential if we are going to take midwifery. The other thing that the clerk said is we need to recognise the importance of political awareness and activity if midwifery is to survive and prosper. And one of my kind of things that I've learned um, doing politics, particularly over the last 15 to 20 years, is every time you get a win, wait for the backlash and plan for it and be strategic. Often what happens in midwifery is we get a win and we celebrate, which is great and we should, but we do not think about what is going on in, in the background that could potentially be trying to destabilise that win. So always be politically aware and active if you want to survive. So I just briefly want to um, talk about a study I did that was published in Birth, and I put the reference up earlier, but I will also put it up again just now so that you can um, get it if you want to read the full paper, because I'm obviously not going to give you all of the data in the paper. But I did a study where I looked at what was said about midwives, midwifery, and midwife, obstetricians and obstetrics and birth, over a one-year period on the internet in web-based um, news reports. And I analysed using a quantitative content analysis what was being put out there into the public about our profession. So um, I won't talk about the birth aspect, that was a, a, a massive one, but I'm going to talk about the, the study that I did for one year um, on midwifery from, from 2006 to 2007. And in that time, I ended up with over a thousand alerts that were to do with midwifery and obstetrics. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the things that came out of that. But what I like so much about this slide, I don't know if you can spot what's going on. And please type it in if you can spot it. But this shows the numbers of midwife and obstetrician alerts coming through for the different months. And the dark blue is the midwives, and the light blue is the obstetricians. Do you notice something happening in May? And uh, what do you think might be actually happening there? So there is a big spike in midwives, and you can see that the month of May is having a huge impact. Now, some people have written, written uh, Mother's Day. Yes, Mother's Day had some impact, but remember I was looking for midwives, and midwives and midwifery as the key. But this is IMD. This is Midwives Day. This is widely reported around the world. And this is the impact that we have from this day. And what I found when I did the analysis is the most positive depictions and the most powerful language in the media reports came out in May. So happy Midwives Day. Keep at it because you have this massive impact. And as you can see, it's fairly similar midwives and obstetricians in the, in the different months. Um, here. If you look at the countries, I think this is really interesting. I broke it down into the countries, those thousand media um, news reports. And you can see some interesting trends going on here. Obviously, the US has the largest. They are the, the inventors of the internet, after all, and the most avid users. But look at the contrast between the numbers of reports on midwives and obstetricians related to some of the countries. What else do you see here? So you see in the US a very big dominance of obstetrics in the media reports and much less midwife reports. And you see in the UK where midwifery is very strong, that the majority of the reports are around midwives. In Australia where we're getting stronger, we're starting to become neck and neck. And I want to repeat this study and start to show how as midwifery changes in its power and presence, so do the numbers of reports. Canada. Again, you can see midwives now becoming very strong and moving ahead. New Zealand, where midwifery is very strong, absolutely midwives now lead. And um, I think this is fascinating because this also shows that the media both reflects and creates opinion. And where midwifery is strong, midwives actually dominate in the media. The same things that came out of the study when I looked at the midwife, midwifery, and mid midwife themes 
where the, the largest theme that came out was mainstream and midwives. And this is on models of care and the rise of midwifery stories. And 28% of the stories reported were that. And the next largest theme was what I call the Cinderella of maternity care. And these were workforce and industrial issues. And following that came uh, a theme that I called Delivering the Baby with Your Hands Time. These were funding issues, insurance, and legislation. And then way down at 8% of the media reports came the, the theme Ask the Expert. And I want you to keep that 8% in your mind when we go and look at the obstetricians. And then at 7% recognizing midwives, interestingly, most of these came out on midwives' deaths. Uh, and unsafe um, midwives... Hannah, Hannah, Yes. Hannah, sorry to interrupt you. I'm terribly sorry. We're still getting a few comments about the audio. So can I just ask you to turn your webcam off now and hopefully then um, we've done everything we can for um, the audio. And um, um, Thank you. I did beg your pardon for interrupting you. I'll try that again. All right. Uh, so the audio is on safe midwives was, was around 6% of the report and then the art of birth um, was around 2% and then other things that I really couldn't categorize. And so when you look at this and you, you, you actually look at the quantity of reports around the different themes, you can see that there's a lot of um, emphasis here on, on midwives, yes, rising and articulating what they're doing, but also a huge amount on the fact that midwives have a huge workforce issue and that midwives have huge industrial and regulation um, and insurance restrictions. And then way down, much lower comes the expert midwife and recognizing midwives. If you look at um, what that all kind of came out of saying is that midwives are gaining acceptance, but they're seeking recognition. If we look at obstetricians, do you remember where midwives sat when they asked the when we had the ask the expert? Well, we sat at about eight percent. It was the number one category for obstetricians. Ask the expert, and these were midwives. These were were reports around obstetricians who were doing lots of research and being very much being consulted as the expert. The next was Doctor the Heroes Amongst Us, and this was announcements and awards. You might remember for midwife that was seven percent. And then it was obstetric workforce. Then it was around reports of trends in care and new technology that obstetricians were engaging in, and some of them were quite scary. The disappearing obstetricians following that. So what I want to do now is just tell you how different that is to the midwives. If you think about where the midwives issues were most dominant in the media here, clearly the obstetricians are seen as the experts, as heroes amongst us, and then followed on by the, the fact that there are some workforce woes. But again, very, very dominant was the fact that they were experts, forging new frontiers, inventing technology. So now let's contrast those with the midwifery themes. But what really came out was obstetricians have both recognition and acceptance, whereas midwives increased has not got that recognition yet. And then I contrasted those major themes, and um, you can see clearly the RC expert obstetrics were seen as vastly more uh, of, of more important a group to go to to ask for expert advice. The workforce issues midwives still outstripped obstetricians, but you know there were some similarities. But again, huge differences in public recognition. And um, what I found interesting is, is that what really showed how recognized doctors are is even if their daughter got married on the weekend, they got reported. And this is telling us that obstetricians are seen as very important in society. Litigation was fascinating. Litigation was neck and neck, 31 reports in both groups. However, what was absolutely fascinating was the way those reports were, were put forward. With midwives, there were three that were serialized, two of which were not midwives, they were no midwives, um, but serialized and stationalized. Sometimes you felt you were reading a novel. With the doctors, they were all individual cases. They were written very objectively and often ended with, well, he was a good doctor and he made a mistake. So even the language used to report these things have huge impact. And then um, you can see the massive issue going on with the recognition of midwifery with funding, insurance, and legislation. And this is a lovely quote that, that comes from a, a Canadian study. And um, 
in this they talk about the whole situation reminds me of a long hard labour like my firstborn. Midwifery has been in second stage for a long, long time. Midwives and consumers have been working really hard to support this birth. But everyone knows pushing is hard work. Tired. And um, that moving from acceptance to recognition is hard work. And, and for many midwives around the world, I think we are in second stage. And we now need to bring out all of our skills to get us through the birth, the profession, and to move us from acceptance, as we increasingly are, to recognition. So I call this getting on with the birth or fighting the demidwification of our profession. And there is a, a, an enormous um, amount of evidence that actually midwifery, one of the most ancient professions in the world, has progressively through the last 300 years, sadly, been demidwified. De be midwifed. So even though this is not a word and you can't put it on your scrubble board, it's my little kind of um, capturing of what I think is going on. So how do we fight the demidwification of the profession? And I think the first one is, yes, moving into recognition is a key. And how do we do that? And if we look back at how obstetricians are very much seen as the experts, research is fundamental. And, and you know, as a researcher, being able to ask questions that only midwives will ask is the only way we are going to show midwifery work. Because obstetricians aren't going to ask questions about how midwifery works. And very much in the last de decade, in two decades, we have seen the rise of fantastic midwifery research. And we've seen this get into the media. We've seen this start to shape policy and agenda. So I can't speak more strongly about the need for midwives to get research active and to support research and to get involved. We need to reframe our profession. There's a lot of bad media and press that goes on. Unfortunately, the media is very uh, attached to the negative. And we need to be very strategic about getting good stories out there, not always just responding to the bad. And that's often the mistake we make. We need to show that midwifery is relevant. If you look at what goes on in the media, it's either home birth and it's the disaster, or it's elective cesarean women requesting it. And it's as though 98% of the population and what actually happens in maternity care is not even understood or reported. And this makes women out there often think, well, I wouldn't want a home birth, so that's not relevant to me. Um, midwives are associated with that. So midwives are either depicted as being um, associated with home birth and completely outside the system or very much subservient to the obstetrician um, in the system. So we have to be very careful to make sure that women understand and the public understands that every woman needs a midwife and some women need an obstetrician as well. So how do we do it? Well, hanging on to what we know can only ever be a short-term strategy. And I, I love this picture of the polar bear gripping uh, the ice, the uh, iceberg that's um, quickly melting under, under them. And as times change and issues affect us, we have to learn to adapt as midwives. We have to learn. We are so clever. You look at midwives in the birth room while they recognize a woman is, is in, a, in a situation where she's blocked, she's maybe mentally blocked, or that position isn't working. We're so intuitive. We're so inventive. We need to bring this out with politics and be flexible and be able to change. And the question I'd ask today is, do we believe in what we do? And I, I often say this to my students. Do you believe that you are in one of the most magnificent and fabulous professions on earth? Do you truly, honestly, in your heart believe it? I, I can honestly say that I do not think there is a greater profession on earth. There is nothing ever else that I've ever wanted to do. Do you believe that every day you change, change lives? Do you believe that you are important? Because if you believe that, you'll go outside and you'll go into the world and you'll go in, into your care of women telling it. And I think the way many midwives practice and many of their attitudes tells me that they actually do not believe that what they do is important. I love this quote from Henry Ford. And he says, coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. And one of the greatest things I see uh, midwives failing at 
is that we're not really good at all coming together and working as one. We're not good at trying to put aside some of our our um, pet passions that we will, will not be flexible on. We, we want it to be only our way. We want our issue to be listened to. Instead of coming together and working on the key things that are going to get us together, so my great sort of plea with you would be, yes, we need to come together. And today we're doing that around the world. It's fantastic. We need to then keep together, even when it's hard and the issues sometimes divide us. But ultimately, we will never, ever change the profession and midwifery if we do not work together. And by working together, I'm including women in that, because without women, obviously, none of this is ever going to happen. So are we ready for the challenge? Because, of course, with change, while we get new and exciting opportunities, it also can destroy all we hold dear. And learning to be flexible in politics, learning to negotiate, learning at times to compromise, as hard as that is to do, is the only way actually we will survive. This, um, another quote from de Klerk said that, while health reform influences midwives, they are rarely, if ever, the focus of the debate, and they run the danger of being victims of unintended consequences. And you only have to look at what's happened in Australia to realise that while, yes, there have been some health reforms that have been great for us, there have also been some uh, reforms that have had unintended consequences for us. And one of the consequences of unintended reform is, of course, around the world the issue with um, insurance for home birth and twice. That has been a result of more global changes in how insurance is provided, but also in what health um, registration bodies require. And it's had the unintended consequence of impacting seriously on private midwives and their insurance. So we must always be aware. So every time a policy comes out in health, every time something is, is afoot, think about how does this is potentially going to impact midwifery. We don't rank highly on the health agenda, but we need to make sure that we're aware and we make our voice come out there and, and identify issues that are going to to keep it really simple, if you're negotiating with government, if you're trying to get um, a point across, if you're trying to make a policy relevant argument, keep it simple. There's two things government's interested in, money and votes. And that's it. And so everything we do, motherhood statements are not going to help the government. Uh, we should be thinking about how does midwifery save the government money and how does midwifery save votes? And the best way to obviously um, do that with the voting is to make sure that consumers are the ones that are up front and working strongly with midwives. And we need to make sure that we have data that documents the outcomes and costs of midwifery care. And we've got some very smart researchers who are now doing that. We need to make sure that data is of interest to policymakers. And we need to make sure the findings are communicated in a manner that the public can understand. And these are things that I think midwives actually are very good at, because we are good at taking very complex concepts in, in, in medical care and simplifying them and making them much more understandable to them. So we have to be able to do this when we deal with government as well. So how can you as a midwife become more political? Well, you need to have a voice. And I cannot say more strongly, you need to join your professional organization and get involved. So ICM, as, as the national body that represents midwives, every country, if you don't have your own national um, association as part of ICM, then please get one happening. There is nothing more powerful than when a group of midwives get together, get a name, get a position. One of the greatest things is, that you can do things like common in the media, whereas an individual midwife in a hospital can't stand up and criticize what's going on within her organization. She has to have another person who is in a professional organization to be that voice. Get on to key committees. Um, uh, people often complain to me about policies and procedures, and I say, well, get onto the committee and change the policies and procedures. The only way to make it happen. Learn to network. Learn to communicate with more than just midwives. Learn to get others on board. The um, ability to connect with women's groups, with, with different organizations, with obstetricians, with psychiatrists, with social workers. If we can bring everyone together around key issues, we'll be much more powerful. 
Um, press releases we use a lot, and they're very good at strategically getting out certain messages. One of the things I've found most powerful is that um, targeting key journalists. So if you have an important message to come out or you have a publication coming out, get onto a good journalist, give them the story the day before the publication comes out, and target them. And that way you will often end up with far more effect than waiting for a publication or a press release. Striking at the optimal moment, knowing that you don't put out anything in the media on Friday, because it will die over the weekend. Monday's a good day. Learning you know, how to get your message out at optimal time. Political lobbying, really essential. And this is something I think midwives are learning better skills at. But making sure we have lobbyists, making sure that we have got the skills and the people there who are placed to put our position forward. I haven't got time to talk much about the media. It's one of my passions. I've spent the last 15 years being a media spokesperson. And I can assure you that the media does care, but a little, uh, for a short time. The good thing about our profession is mothers and babies lend themselves to media coverage. We are, I mean, I often say I'm really glad I'm not a podiatrist. Uh, imagine trying to, uh, you know, sell a hammer toe. We have got cute babies and, and, and gorgeous mothers that we can always get into the media and people like them. But the media can also crucify and sanctify midwives. So be very aware. The media is not your friend. You have to get very strategic at how you use it. Media relations take an enormous amount of persistence and sensitivity and, to frankly, a very thick skin. And knowing that there's a time to talk and a time to shut up, I once responded to everything. I now learn who not to respond to. Sometimes you actually do need to hunker down and you do need to let it pass. Uh, in the olden days, we'd say that um, today's fish wrapper is, it, today's newspaper is tomorrow's fish wrapper, but we, of course, can't say that anymore. Because those of us who, who are younger don't uh, see the old uh, fish and chips wrapped up in the news. But, you know, the thing about the media is the attention span is short and, and, and negative stories will pass and sometimes you need to learn when not to. I haven't left consumers to laugh because I don't think they're important. I've left them to laugh because I think they are the most important. And none of the changes that have happened in Australia, I know in New Zealand, um, and in many other countries would have happened if we had not had powerful women standing outside the front of our parliament house with their signs lobbying our parliamentarians. And so consumers are essential. And, and I find it fascinating that the more oppressed uh, a midwife group is within a nation, often the stronger a consumer group. But the easier it all is, often the um, less prominent a consumer group. So my advice to you would be, if, you, if it's good in your country, and I know there are countries where it's good, but um, the Netherlands is, is one, but we know that there have been a lot of changes there recently. But, but don't ever let go of the importance of consumers, because you will ne it will never remain um, Good. There will always be forces that will try to make sure that midwifery does not have the power. So consumers are essential, and midwives and women need to work together. And you know, if you're listening to this and saying, "Well, I'm not going to go into media, and I'm not really into politics, and I don't do research. I'm a clinical midwife," well, uh, I think if, if there's anything you take away today is that the most powerful political act that occurs every day around the world is the way midwives are with you. There is nothing more powerful than the way you are with a woman, whether it's in an antenatal visit, whether it's during the birth, or whether it's in the postnatal period. We can change the birth world one birth at a time. And when you hear women coming out of birth with serious trauma, when you hear some of the things that midwives have said to them, when you see some of the treatment from midwives, it makes you feel terribly sad and ashamed of, of your profession at times. But it also makes you realize that it takes one midwife down to one woman who then goes out and tells all of her friends and relatives about that care to show that that is an incredibly strong political act. So if, if, if there's none of those other things you feel you can do, <clears throat> remember that every time you're with a woman, you have the opportunity to perform the most powerful political act in the world change the world one birth at a time. 
And I want to end there and um, with, with, I guess, the, the strongest message, which is from this lovely Kenyan proverb that sticks in a bundle are unbreakable. That if we stick together, if we work together, and I include women and midwives in that, if we are strategic, if we learn to take a deep breath when we want to lash back or we want to defend our particular territory, if we learn when to be public about what we agree on and private about what we don't agree on, if we learn how to handle the media, if we learn how to get the best people forward to do that, if we learn how to make sure we support our researchers, not criticize them or not make fun of research, if we learn how to do that and all work together, we are unbreakable. We're a large number in the world. We have the greatest impact on women's lives every day when it comes to childbirth. We have it all. But sometimes I don't understand why we all dissipate and not support each other and not go ahead strongly together. So that's really all I, I had prepared and I, I want to leave um, the opportunity obviously for questions now. Thanks. Thank you so much, Hannah. I think that's an amazing way to start the conference. Um, you know, raising the profile of midwifery, getting the message out there, getting politically active and sticking together. What a fantastic message. So I would like to ask if there are any questions from the room. Um, perhaps you could raise your hand if you would like to use the microphone or we can respond to typed messages as well. So thank you very much for that. I'll just put up that, that paper again um, for people if they wanted to read the whole thing that's now published in birth. Um, but all the quotes are in there and, and that's really very interesting reading. I can't actually see any questions coming there, but everyone's making wonderful comments about um, what you've said. Yeah, somebody's made a comment here, um, Lisa Kennedy, thanks. Um, sticking together, we're not good at this, it's our big downfall in Australia, I agree. Um, I think, you know, in Australia, um, we powerfully searched ahead uh, a, a couple of years ago and it was probably the first time that so much fell into our lap as far as Medicare and, and uh, uh, the opportunity for, for midwives to really have that recognition and we work brilliantly with consumers but sadly, yes, there were, were factions that, um, that you know, within that group that didn't agree. And, and I think in some ways we took the power out of our potential. I do think we've learned. I, I'm a great, I know I'm a Pollyanna, but I am a great believer that, you know, sometimes the tough times in life teach us the greatest lessons. And I certainly am, am wiser as a result of, of that time. But learning sometimes to be humble and learning to, you know, Listen, listen to each other and also talk to each other. Sometimes the conspiracy theories that arise because we've heard something and we haven't actually gone and addressed it with the person. So one of the greatest lessons, and I, I look at places like the US in, in their, their home birth summit that they ran uh, a couple of years ago. And what they did is they came into a room, which is phenomenal for the US when you think of, of if, if there is a nation with more politics going on around maternity care, it's that one. But they got all of the people, all of the stakeholders in a room, and they said, let's not debate whether or not home birth stays. Let's not debate the statistics. Let's talk about how we're going to make it happen safely. Well, it totally changed the agenda. So rather than fighting, rather than that public animosity that saw who came out, they came up with a fantastic statement that got read into their, their Senate that said, well, we can live with this. And, and I think as midwives, we need to do a lot more of that. There's a question there, Hannah, about whether midwives should be members of the maternity coalition. Your advice on that? Well, I am. Um, I love the maternity coalition. I, I, I think it's fantastic. I, I guess there, there is a level in me that, that's cautious to because I do, I do see the value of consumer-led and um, uh, consumer
consumer only group. I do think there's a value in that because I think unfortunately sometimes <clears throat> consumer groups are dismissed because they are seen to be ingratiated with midwives and therefore following a political agenda. I think that the the way um, that um, the organisation in, in the UK in particular, um, the National Childbirth um, Trust, the NCT, has done it is brilliant. I think that the way they have strategically got people on all of their committees involved in all of the policy decisions is wonderful. But at the same time, there needs to be a, a forum for midwives and, and women to work together. So, yeah, I, I still like to see consumer-only organisations, but I think there's also a place for us being able to be together. I've just given the microphone to Denise. She wanted to ask a question. So, Denise, you can speak now. I don't think her microphone can be working. Has anyone, if anyone else has any questions, raise your hands or type them. Hello, is it working now? Yes, it is. Right. Um, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to share people with people about the maternity manifesto in New Zealand, which is a, um, a combined effort with um, maternity service consumer council people and others to try and put some maternity issues on the political agenda here um, and we've created the maternity manifesto where people can come and sign up as individual and group supporters and we have something like 30 group support service, including the College of Midwives and then maternity service consumer council and others are taking this to the politicians in fact next, next week on the 20th we have a uh, an appointment with the Labor health spokesperson um, and we've talked to the Greens and we've talked to the Māori Party. A little harder to get to the National Party at the moment, but anyway, that's the agenda. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Excellent. It's wonderful. Um, just have another... I just, just want to make a comment on New Zealand. Um, you know, I really do think that if we have a microcosm of excellence, it's New Zealand today, and, and I think many of us can take important lessons from that. Yes, definitely agree. We just have a couple of minutes left until um, 10 to, if there are any other questions. Oh, Cora, I'll like give you the mic um, microphone. Coming from, coming from Australia, um, you know, I thought New Zealand was a microcosm of excellence, and it is in that women have access and so forth. But if you see the maternity manifesto, you'll see that um, 70 odd percent of the women. What would you recommend people do uh, where they locally live as far as becoming more politically um, involved? Uh, do you recommend that people write their local? Um, Sorry, I think, I think we have cross questions. I'll, I'll answer the last one just because it was... Yeah, look, I, I mean, I, I, we had certain cases in Australia where people ran um, for, for Parliament and ran for the Senate, and I think it was fantastic, and particularly when uh, the media got hold of it, they um, got quite a lot of attention around women's issues and, and midwifery issues, and they also got noticed when they then started to negotiate with politicians about the, about selling their seats if they, they didn't get a number to, to get a seat themselves. So, uh, look, I, I think we have to put, we have to go at many, many levels. We have to, um, we have to attack at many levels and, and you know, there, there are those that are fantastic at going into Parliament and negotiating and there, there are those that are still fantastic at chaining themselves to the gates of Parliament and I actually think there's a place for it all. Where I think we fall down is when we who are in Parliament get criticised by those who are chained to the gates and when those chained to the gates are criticised and, and, and then we divide. So let's see a place for all of that and everybody with their individual skills should use that skill that they have to then um, be politically active. And, and I think there's absolutely a place for midwives to get into politics, official politics in, in government. Okay, we'll just take one last question from 
Stefan, I'll just give you the microphone. So you have the microphone now. Okay, we're unable to hear the question there and um, we've been told by the organisers that we need to finish up now at 10 to. So once again, thank you Hannah. Have you got any parting words? Uh, there's a comment here that says um, midwives are terrified of politics. I agree, I don't understand it. Um, midwives are also terrible, terrified of feminism and yet we're here to cover it. Um, <laughs> so I think we just, you know, encourage each other that it's actually not that harm. It's really exciting. And the way that I get over my nerves in, in dealing with some of these things is I think of it as a giant chess game. That's all it is. And if you, you're getting knocked out at one point, well, you need to be strategic about staying in at another. So just think of it as a giant chess game. And when, when all of that fails, just remember what it's like to be in the room with a woman giving birth. You know, there is nothing more powerful, nothing more worthwhile fighting for than that. And, and it'll give you the strength. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs>